So the easiest type of software to define is proprietary software. So that's where we're going to start. Now proprietary software is any software where the code is owned and not released by the people who wrote it. So think copyright when you think of proprietary software. Uh, often companies charge for proprietary software, and when I say that word that has property in it, you might think, okay, it's anything I have to pay for. Actually, payment and openness of code aren't necessarily related. There are things you have to pay for that are open source, and there are things that cost no money that are proprietary. So this slide looks at, on the left side, we've got a couple of challenges about proprietary software. And on the right, we have a couple of the possible benefits. So the challenges are we can't see what's happening in the code. We can't use it again or copy it in any way. Uh, often there's a charge to use the code when there's almost always a charge to upgrade. And most proprietary software, you can't customize the code itself. On the flip side, proprietary software often has better customer support. There are people who are paid to update it and maintain it. And for instance, keep an eye on its security. And in general, it's, it's often easier to rely on it being there for a longer time. Here's some common proprietary software. Google Docs, the Adobe Creative Suite, the Apple operating system and iOS on your iPhone, Screencast-O-Matic, which is a pretty popular screencasting software you may have used. It's absolutely free in terms of money, but it is proprietary. Microsoft Word and the entire Microsoft Office suite, then Windows itself from Microsoft, all proprietary. And then if you have a Facebook app on your phone, or if you use the Facebook Messenger or the code that runs Facebook itself, that mysterious algorithm behind it that pops up things you like and things you hate, that is proprietary. You cannot look under the hood of Facebook and see what's going on for the most part. Uh, but wait, some of that stuff is free. I don't pay to use Google Docs, for instance. Well, yeah, proprietary freeware is one of the most common types of software available. So let's look at an example, the Chrome web browser. It's free to download and use. It has lots of great features. You can also use it on your phone, your tablet, your computer. I don't know, probably you can use it on your serial. Chrome is great, but Chrome is technically proprietary software because you can't see the full code for Chrome. Now, Chrome was built from the Chromium free software project, which is also from Google. So basically, Google paid engineers and programmers to create the code for a great open source web browser. And then they took that code, wrapped in a few secret ingredients that make it better, and call that Chrome. In fact, Chromium is the basis for many other browsers, including Opera, Samsung's native internet app on its phones, Brave, which is a security-focused browser with a cryptocurrency feature, Silk, which is not only soy milk, but also the browser built into Amazon's Kindle hardware, and something called Microsoft Edge that I should look into more. Some of those browsers are open source, meaning that they took the Chromium code, tweaked it, and re-released it. And some of them are proprietary, meaning they added features, and they're not telling you how. So now you're wondering, okay, how do I tell whether something is open source or not? There is a really quick way to tell if the software you're using is open source or not. I'm gonna walk you through that in about 60 seconds. Step one, go to Wikipedia. Step two, search for the name of the software that you're curious about. Step three, open its article. And then for nearly every piece of software, over on the right-hand side, you will find this little information box. And the information box will have license written somewhere in there. And look at the license, MPL 2.0. The Mozilla Public License is a free and open source software license. Okay, so Firefox is open source. Okay, so at the end of the day, 
If, I, if a great piece of software costs me no money and I love it, why would I care whether it's open source Chromium or proprietary Chrome? That's the motivating question for this course, and it's one we'll keep coming back to. For now, just think about it. Why would you care? Who would care? Who should care? I'm going to leave you with that for this week, and I hope you have fun exploring Open Broadcaster, and I look forward to your reflections. <laughs>